Hey, my friend, do you have to unpack any baggage? That that emotional stuff? Hmm, that's interesting. What would you do, or what would it be like, if you didn't have to unpack anything? And you just let it go, leave it where it is, and move forward and towards what you want. That's something, isn't it? That, should, that ought to interest you, especially now you're here in Personal Development Unplugged. Have a listen after this. Hey, this is the Personal Development Unplugged podcast, where we use hypnosis. Yeah, hypnosis. NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Don't worry what it is. It's just a mass of processes that we're going to get you to change. Change to let go of anxiety, low self-esteem, and create massive, massive supreme inner confidence. But that's confidence in your competence and competence in your confidence, which means you can do anything and be, well, be safe to enjoy. Enjoy the world as it should be with you at the helm, creating the life that you want. That's what this podcast is about. You and being the best you you could be, singing from your real voice, aligned with your mission, aligned with your passions. That's what it's about. So if you're interested in letting go of anxiety, if you're interested in letting go of fear, guilt, all those blooming syndromes, imposter syndromes, and every little bit of the mind which is negative, then have a listen here because we've got some wonderful processes and lots of good conversations with between you and me to get us both thinking in such wonderful ways. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Just take the trance to have a have a listen. This is Personal Development Unplugged with Paul Clough. In simplicity, there is genius. In simplicity, there is genius. Hey, my friend. Back for another longer podcast. I hope it's going to be a good one. I hope it does. And I hope it helps you as it's helped me in the past. You see, a long time ago, I, what I would do was be my own therapist. And in being my own therapist, I would also record what I, what I did to get out of that bad time. And I did it in a way that I couldn't, I'm not a writer. So I narrated it, bought a little six track recording thing and sat away and, well, played around and finally got it going. And when I got to the end of it, I then had it narrated. Not narrated, um, transcribed. And I was working with this lovely lady. This way back, way back. And she was a writer. And I said, I know I shouldn't do this. You're a client of mine, but I've written a little book too. Would you mind having a look at it? And the book, well, book of a kind, I guess. Because it goes through my story, the things I did and the processes I learned that, and that helped me. But I did it in the guise of my friend. My friend was having all these problems and I was the therapist. And I showed it to this lady and she came back for her second, um, her second session, as it were. And she said, Look, before we start, Paul, I just want to talk to you about that book you gave me to read. I did read it. It's really interesting. But she said, do you know what? Firstly, it's so obvious that it's you. And secondly, if you're going to do stuff like this, be brave. Be brave and tell people that it's you. You're the writer. You you have to take that risk. You have to put it out there and be true. True to yourself. That's what people do. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. And the, the title of that book was It Doesn't Have to Be This Way, which is a little bit like, well, it isn't really, Because you might be saying, okay, Cluffy, what's this got to do with unpacking baggage? Well, you see, the reason it's a little bit like that is because I had an email the other week and it was all about someone requesting some help for a friend. And when I asked a little bit deeper on that email, just to give me a, it was too general, just a little bit more. It wasn't for a friend, it was for them. And they wanted to unpack baggage of the past. And you see, I I find that really difficult about unpacking baggage. I know K 
carrying around baggage is bloody hard. It's heavy. It takes all your energy. And you're continually getting bigger and heavier. And and that's not much fun. Not much fun. So you have to let it go. But you see, if you're going to unpack baggage consciously, and counselling, I guess, does this. And I don't do counselling. Because I think sometimes that if you talk and talk and talk, it's all conscious. And you didn't create this stuff consciously. You know, the things and the issues you have, you don't, if you create them consciously, you would just think them away, talk them away, because they would be conscious. You just decide, I'm not going to do this. But they're created unconsciously with a wonderful intention. And therefore, it's your unconscious mind running these programs, these ways of being, these behaviors and limiting beliefs and you know, there's negative emotions and positive emotions and positive emotions. Your unconscious mind is doing all that, those processes, programs, strategies with the most wonderful positive intention. But you can't change it. I, or you can. You can sometimes, I guess. There's never, never. But the way I work is you work with the unconscious mind because that's what's running the process, the strategy, the program. And you work with your unconscious mind to let go of that baggage. Because you see, if you try, this is, this is in my head. First of all, you didn't create it consciously. Therefore, if you didn't create it consciously, you created it unconsciously, and that's where you work. But the second thing is, well, and the other thing is, you've probably talked about it quite a lot anyway. If not with some people, some friends, you've talked about it with yourself. And all that talk didn't do anything, did it? Because you've still got the issue. So that's the second reason. But the other thing about unpacking baggage, if you could do it, and you could go back to the times in the past that is part of that baggage. They're, they're probably not going to be the best times in the world because there wouldn't be baggage otherwise and they wouldn't be that, so heavy and dense. But the thing is, it depends what emotion, which mood, what state you're in when you remember or try to remember those issues and those memories of the past. Because whatever emotional state you're in right now will affect the way that you view recall, remember, feel, uh, or just whatever. However you, you would attach that memory, it would be different. Because the one thing for certain is you'll never remember it the same, t same way as it was right back then. Those times then when you were there are different as you remember it now. You, we, we don't remember things properly and correctly anyway. How many times have you heard about you know, witnesses all having completely different different descriptions of a person and they're all there at the same time. What was going on in their minds? How do they miss it? We all have things that we, we're biased with. We have cognitive biases and all that stuff. So as you remember that memory, it's going to be blooming different. And probably, I'm going to guess this, if you're wanting to unpack some baggage, you're probably not in the most positive state. And if you're not in the most positive state, it means you're in a pretty negative state and the negative state will affect how you remember. So you're going to see it worse than it was probably. So, you know, I just don't get it. I, don't, I, 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 I can't do that. Now, well, I don't do that. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you how, how I do do, I, I'll say that again, how I do do that. But I just don't think it's a good, good thing. I mean, if, you, if you're in a real happy mood and you remember something, something which wasn't quite so good, you go, well, actually, it wasn't quite so bad, was it? It was not that bad. Maybe I was making more of it than I thought. But if you're in, an, in a negative, if you were down and you thought of that memory, you go, oh, that was bad, wasn't it? In fact, as I think about it now, oh, I didn't think it was that bad, but it really is. That's what happens. Or you could, with the help of a hypnotist, I guess, you could fully regress. And there are some hypnotists who will regress you back to cause. Well, I think it's the cause. Sometimes they go through every other bloody event that's linked up to that, so that it's a double whammy. But you wouldn't get that from me, because I'll tell you for why. If something was not that good in the past, and you go back there and experience it at the same age that you were back then, the same you, as it were, because that's what re real regression is, not staying as you are now and looking back at it, but going back into that memory at the same age, looking through your eyes as it was then, hearing everything. Well, to me, that was just confirmed that it was a shitty time. And therefore, I don't see any benefit in that at all. In fact, I, 
in my mind, it could only make it worse. I know there's some hypnotherapists or therapists who do that and they get their results and they, but they go through ab reactions and all that stuff, which is all to me a horrible thing to do. So I won't do that because I think there's better ways. And if there's a better way that you can be comfortable and get the same result or better result or a better result most of the time, or if not all of the time, then I go in that way. You know, so one of the ways you could be, and I've done this before, uh, depending on the type of um, issue we're we're talking about, with a skilled hypnotist, hypnotherapist, you may be able to go back to that memory, but this time dissociated, staying at your age now, and you're looking through your eyes at your current age at that younger you. And from there, you can get that understanding of what your that younger you needed back then. What that younger you, and, and also maybe a little bit of the why your younger you and your unconscious mind chose to have this, you know, this negative way. Who what's the negative way now? But it did the best it could right back then for what, what it could do with the wisdom you had and what your unconscious mind and the experiences you had. And in fact, that's a natural coping mechanism for a lot of people who have had some really bad times. They automatically dissociate from pain. And when you dissociate from pain, you don't feel it. But sometimes that process goes on and they, they dissociate from everything. So that it's not only the pain they dissociated from, they dissociate from pleasure. So their life is just neutral. You know, it's natural, neutral, but it's not the way to be, I don't think. But I've had people who have seen their younger you and just go, I know, I know, I know what happened. And it generally then wasn't that big because they're seeing it dissociated. They're seeing it as an editor of a movie, maybe. They're seeing it with their own experience, that the, the, the whole experience of their life and all the wisdom and all the learnings they've gained and looking back at that time when maybe you were really young. Now, that works. That works. And a lot of the times I get that during a session and it happens naturally because I often ask, what would that younger you need back then that you have now? Because that just shows the unconscious mind, well, I needed to have some love. I needed to have uh, some confidence and I've got all of that now. Oh, well, I've got it now. I don't need to have this old process and I certainly don't need to have the baggage, but I don't need to know. I don't need to know the ins and outs and nuts and bolts and everything of that blooming thing because I don't think you do. You see, I, I have another way-ish as well and I'll explain that in a minute. But you see, the question I ask myself is, do you want to choose between letting it go, being okay and moving towards where you want to go? the way you want to be, or do you just want to know why? Why you felt that way? Why you did what you did before and still keep that feeling? Don't get it. I know what I choose. I want to go towards what I want, the way I want to feel, to have the life and the dreams and the goals happen the way I want them. You see, I think to me it's a no-brainer. I mean, I want a light in my house, in my room. I'll switch the light the light switch and the bulb will come on. Don't care why it works, how it works. I just want to know every time I switch it on, it works. I get in my car. I press that little, put the key in, press the button, boom, we're off. I don't worry. And I've got got an automatic. So I just brake plus the accelerator and off we go. How does that work? Don't care. Because I'm going towards something else now. I mean, what else? I got your mobile telephone. How the bloody hell does that work? Don't care. I just want to use it to make my phone calls, look at my, whatever you want to do with it. Your computer, which is like the biggest phone in the world, as it were. Why does it all work? How does it all work? I don't care. I don't want to know any of that. I want to be able to use it and just have it. And I want to use it for my lovely experiences of the future that's going to be or the now, and creating more than the future, which, which becomes a now because there is no future. And, and the other thing is there's no past. They've bloody disappeared. One never is, and one never, never will be, because it's in the now. You can think about things in the future, because we do, we imagine. But in the end, it's all what we do right now in this moment. So things of the past, if you think about it, they're gone. End of. Now, I know that's 
Easier said than done. I'm not stupid. Well, I am. <coughs> Excuse me. But I do work in a different way with this. Now, with what I've done before, here's, a, here's an example of why I don't unpack and why I just get the unconscious mind to work. Because a long time ago, and this is my first real experience of it, I had a guy phone me up in tears saying, you've got to help me, you've got to help me. I don't know what, what's going on in my life. I've got this going on, this going on. I, I'm a lorry driver, and, I, and if I make the wrong, wrong move and I turn left instead of right, I'm sick. I have to pull over, and I'm sick, and I've done this, and my, my family's getting upset because I do other stuff. And he just burst into tears. He said, can you see me tomorrow? Now, normally I say no. Normally with my clients, I like to see them for a, an initial consultation. And I get them to think about that before they come. And then I get them to think about something between then and the first session. All this lovely paste. And they get to know my philosophy and they get it so it resonates with them. So they know it's the right thing for them. Didn't have time for this. And I got, well, I said, okay. I don't know why I said, okay. But he got to me. And he came in. And he was a lovely fellow. So I think somehow there was a, there was some connection and he sat down. And my first question was, well, you know, what do you want? And he just burst into tears. I don't know. I just got, all I want is to stop. And there's no real consoling him. So I just put him in a trance. And he was, because he was emotional, he followed my instructions and he went into this lovely trance. And I told his unconscious mind, and, and in fact, uh, my two sons and I have developed a lovely process we call an unconscious search and review and heal. And I got his unconscious mind to search back to the very first time, the root cause of that issue, but making sure that it never, ever, ever entered into his conscious mind. His conscious mind was to go and dream wonderful dreams. And once that unconscious mind had found the root cause, was to review it, review it in a way to, to understand it. And when it reviewed it and understood it, was to then be able to learn from it. Because that's the healing part. Because when you learn from something, you don't need the negative emotions from that anymore. Negative emotions are just there to remind you of it. Remind you that it hasn't been healed, hasn't been reviewed, and it hasn't been learned from. So, and the unconscious mind did that for me. And for him, his unconscious mind did it. Followed my instructions, but he just did it. And he didn't know what the bloody hell was happening. Other than he was away dreaming of wonderful things which was he needed that anyway and then he came out of trance and he said well I heard everything you said and I was dreaming of these wonderful things but I don't know what was going on I didn't get any memories Paul I didn't get any chatter I didn't get anything at all but I feel different okay let's see and it, it amazed me because I mean to be fair that was just my intuition to go there and do that and create part of that that process which we've developed even more now and he went away he didn't come back for a second session because he phoned me up and said I don't know what happened yesterday but everything has changed my whole life has changed and I'll let you know in a little while and he did he said he came back and phoned up and said, yeah, my, you know, my family's good. I'm good with my wife. My work is good. In fact, he said, I want you to see my sister because she's just like me. <laughs> or just like I used to be. And she came and saw me. And she was sick three times in the car coming to see me because she was so wrapped up in it. We also, my son and I also worked with a lot of the people he, he worked with because they saw the change in him. And I don't even know up to now. Even now. And he doesn't what the problem was. He didn't unpack it. But his unconscious mind learnt from it. And that's what it's all about. We never take away the memory. Because once the memory's been learnt from and the emotions disappeared, boom, memory was a bad time back then. If we could remember it, unconscious mind decided, no, we're going to keep that away from the conscious mind. Let's go forward. Let's move forward. Which is all my meta. My meta note of this. I thought about, you know, what am I trying to say here? And it's all about Moving forward, going towards what you want. We're not going backwards. We're not going away from things, but we're going to what we want. And it doesn't have to be that difficult. It's pretty simple, really. But the thing is, that's for big stuff. That is for big stuff. And I would always say, if you're going to have big stuff, go and see somebody. 
you know, go and see a really good hypnotist, hypnotherapist who does NLP hypnosis, because they would if they're hypnotists, obviously, and and timeline therapy, because they're, they're really good that way. That's But again, that's the way I've been taught. And that's always where I'm, my leaning will go. I'm sure there's other good people around as well. You get that vibe from them that where it resonates as long as they can do it quickly, not drawn out over weeks and months and years and all that stuff. But I mean, say you have something that you, th- you would think, well, I really want to unpack some of that. Well, my suggestion is go and talk to somebody and see what happens. That's it. Go and see a counsellor, go and see someone and talk and just notice what happens. You might learn from it. But you could actually just think, look, do I really need to unpack this stuff? Or do I just need to put it down? Leave it where it belongs, in the bloody past, because the past doesn't exist, so therefore it won't exist. And I can do that by learning. How do I learn? You get your unconscious mind to do it. You could just say, sitting down quietly, maybe just noting a little bit about the, the issue and just go, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? Unconsciously, what could I learn? What is it that you, the unconscious mind, could learn from this would allow me to feel comfortable and move on? That's one little way. To realize maybe, and even write this down, this is an effect I'm experiencing. Because that's what they are. Everything you're feeling now is effect of something else. And you say, what can you, my unconscious mind, learn from the root cause of this that will allow me and let me be comfortable? And just let that seek in. Because you don't want to know, do you? Why would you want to know if you're going to move forward and enjoy things? And you can make up some wonderful questions like that. Because I believe, and you listen to a little bit of hypnosis, maybe you've picked, because I'm going to go on to that in a minute, you've got other things you could do as well. But just sitting down journaling, you will get maybe that intuition. Even as much as say, well, you know, what are you trying to do for me? There's another good question to your uncle's mind. What are you trying to do for me by making me feel and behave this way. And when you get something, well, I'm trying to, it's going to be around protection. And you say, well, it's not working. What would be a better way? What would be a better way to keep the intention and allow me to be comfortable? Because everything is around safety and I don't feel safe. Therefore, it's not working. There's a conflict. Think, and one of the things I always do with clients, and certainly a lot of my coaching clients, I get them to think of Times in the past when they were the way they would like to feel. Because the way you like to feel, you have to have had experience before, so you wouldn't know how to feel it. So you think back to those times when you were exactly the way you want to want to be now and in the future. And you remember each one individually, specific. And you go back there in your mind. This is the only regression I ever do. Or do the good bits, by the way. I need to regress to the good bits. I go back in time, see what I saw, hear what I heard, and I get my clients to do the same thing and feel how good it is to do this thing, be successful, and be comfortable and safe. And you do that maybe two, three, four times in different experiences where you've had a successful time and you felt good. And it'd be the way you want to feel. And then you say to your unconscious mind, look, there's, here's the examples that you do for me and I'll feel good. What would it be like if we used this instead of the old way? Simple little things. You could write those down, put yourself into or listen to one of my hypnosis tracks, and then just stop it, pause it, look at that, read it, and then go back inside again. You see, there's some wonderful they are wonderful things and questions you could ask. But I have you know the most important thing of all of this, to me anyway, it's to not to know. The why. Why why it all happened. Why do I feel this way? No. The most important thing to know is how you want to be. That's the most important thing. Know how you want to be. Simple. Now, I say simple because most people can do that. But sometimes, and I do get this, that if you've been having this issue for a bit of a a a time, that's become your norm. And I know you've had these good times backwards and forwards, but maybe this is your norm. You go, I don't really know how I want to be. All right, then. Imagine. If it wasn't going to happen, how would I want it to be? 
if I if it could if it could happen this way, how would I in the best way? What one feeling would I like to have? Even with no editing or descript not description, um oh, I can't think of the word now. But nothing is there's no commentary on it. No critique, that's the word. No critique. You just say, I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel happy. I want to feel free. And I can imagine, if that, that was me over there, what would me be like being free? How to walk? How to talk? How to dress? How to cut my hair? How to breathe? What would I believe? And then you see, you're going to imagine it, but I might find that a little difficult to go straight there even if I'm making it up. And that doesn't matter because it's imagination. It's not not true. But you're sending a goal to your unconscious mind. But write the thing down. I want to feel. This is how I will feel when I'm doing this. You can make it in the present tense. Or, as I would do it, I'd do a mind map. And in the middle, I'd put, this is me. And lines going off it. And I'm feeling great. My health is wonderful. I'm breathing in such a wonderful way. I'm taking walks in the countryside and feeling absolutely free. I have true freedom. I have the confidence to go and talk to people. And I'm making friends. And I'd go all those different things. And each time I'm around that, I'd go, and I believe in myself. It's okay. I've got this. I feel, and I list all the emotions I feel on that mind map. Because when you do that, you've got to bloody go inside and then imagine it anyway. And just feel it and keep feeling it. And now, what I've told my clients of late is, once you've done this and you've got it written down, so you can, and it doesn't have to be on a big paper, you can start with a big paper and then just put it onto a little card that you can put in your pocket. Every now and again, every day, you pick it up, you look at it, close your eyes and feel it again. And then put it in your pocket and carry on with your day. It's probably going to take a minute or two. That's all. And you could afford to do that three or four times a day. Because in total, it would be under 10 minutes a day. But during the day, you're feeling bloody good. Because you are imagining it and feeling it again. Imagine it, feel it again. Imagine it, make it better, feel it. Make it even better than that, feel it. And even if that didn't work, and I know it does, by the way, but if it didn't work, you'd get to feel bloody good anyway. So, you know, you've got nothing to lose with that because you're just going to keep feeling good. But you're telling your unconscious mind, this is the way to be safe. This is the way that gives me all, oh, excuse me, gives me all my life. Got too excited there and choked. Now, if you're having problems with that, let me know. And I'll do a complete episode on it. And if need be, I will do a complete hypnosis track for it. If there's anything else you're having a problem around this, about the questions or anything like that, let me know. And I'll do an episode around that. Just like I've done an episode around this question of unpacking packages or baggage. I'll come up with a process. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Hi, Paul. Listen to your stuff. Here's some things I need help with. Full stop. You're going to be anonymous. I'll never, ever, ever, ever let that name go out. Obviously, email you back, and I won't say "dear anonymous," but <laughs> I'm not. Like that. I'd be very friendly. Now, there's all that stuff. Now, maybe it's just a little bit of confidence. Now, I'm going to do something which is absolutely crazy. In December, providing I can get the the wherewithal, because I don't know how to do it yet, I'm going to reduce the price for my Supreme Inner Confidence call to under ten dollars, just for the month of. December. It's my gift to you for Christmas and the rest, of, and therefore it'll be a gift gift for the rest of the year, won't it? So keep an eye out for that. And that'll be starting hopefully on the first of December. So that's something. It's, it's my gift to you. It's got to charge a little bit because I've got a look. You know, it's got to pay for the upkeep of the site and things like that. But hey, play around with it. I'll even give you a money back guarantee on that as well. So don't worry about that. The other thing you can do, you've got. I don't know how many past episodes in here. I've got 300 plus of the longer ones and 300 plus of the five minute quickies. There's stuff as you go down, you'll go, that is something that will help me. That's how I need to change my state. That's how I want to do this. This is how I'm going to anchor it. This, all that stuff. 
You've got loads of resources right here. And you've also got my free hypnosis. There's 55, I think, hypnosis and NLP tracks to help you change in the ways that you, you need. Sign up to that. Where would you get that? PaulCloughOnline.com forward slash podcast. I know a lot of you have signed up already, but you can sign up that. It's free. You don't get hassled or anything like that. And they're yours to download. Because when you download them, you can take them on any device you like and listen to them when you like. And you, to me, sometimes you just go down there and go, that one looks interesting. And probably it's the right thing for you right then. They'll all work, but that's probably the right thing. Just remember, I'm a therapist, not your therapist. I have to say that. But they're just doing things to make you better. So if you've got all of that, and at the moment, with all of that, and if you did buy that confidence course, you spent under $10. That's amazing to me, that is. It's amazing that I'm doing that. It's amazing. It's just, I want to help you move, move forward, move towards what you want. There you go. All I ask, if you could just share this and, and give me the feedback, that's all I ask. If you could share this episode with people, get them to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you ought to subscribe. Because <laughs> there's so much here. There really is. I know not every episode will will gel with you, because it probably won't. But the thing is, the ones that do, the ones that resonate, the ones that give you that golden nugget, could be the one thing that changes everything. And you'll always learn something. There's always something to learn. A little bit of repetition, but we get it in a different way. You're different, I'm different. Every time we speak and listen about it, We'll take it, take things on another way. Sometimes we just have to hear things two or three times before we go, oh, I got that now. But the biggest thing from all of that is listening and listening and listening. And if that's all you're going to do, don't. But if you're going to listen and then do what you listen and learn, then things are going to happen. It's all about the doing. But you have to listen and learn first. And then do it. And then if you get, give me feedback, and if there's things you need to improve, then we'll improve them. I hope in all of that, because I did get a bit excited, got a choke going on. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, give me the feedback. But I really do hope that makes sense and I hope that's going to help you. You don't need to carry the baggage. You don't need to pull it along. And the last thing you don't have to do, or the last thing you don't, you, you don't have to unpack it. In my view, you just leave it where it stays in the past. And when you know the past doesn't exist, it can't affect you and just get your unconscious mind to learn from it. There we go. Simples. And that's the main thing about this. It's got to be simples. Now, hopefully, you're encouraged. Hopefully, you're a little bit curious now. Because some people, I mean, a lot of us, I I didn't know this when we first started. I didn't know how how you could do this stuff. That you didn't have to go through all the trauma and relive the trauma or all the, you know, because trauma's trauma. It doesn't be how big it is. It's just a word. Anyway, let's move forward. And as you move forward towards where you want to go, fly and have more fun than you can stand. Ta-da. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.